One of the most subversive and original figures in 1980s popular culture was a way-faced, cherry-lipped, matchstick-thin child man who wore a red bow tie, white tasseled loafers and a shrunken grey suit and lived in a giant playhouse with weird furniture and a floating head. This was Pee Wee Herman, created and played by the actor Paul Rubens. The character appeared on stage in the Pee Wee Herman show during the early 1980s, but did not become known internationally until the release of the film Pee Wee's Big Adventure in 1985, which marked the debut of director Tim Burton. US cinema in the Reagan era drew heavily on the 50s and early 60s, whether for purposes sweet, Back to the Future, Peggy Sue Got Married, or unsavory Blue Velvet and Parents. This big screen outing for Pee Wee, who was already suffused with the spirit of bygone children shows such as Howdy Doody and Captain Kangaroo, fell somewhere in between. As with the stage and TV incarnations, the film's undercurrent of kinkiness and innuendo never contaminated its air of gleeful innocence. In a story modelled on the Italian neo-realist classic Bicycle Thieves, Pee Wee travels across the US in search of his beloved stolen bike. Along the way he meets the undead truck driver Large Marge, poses as the wife of a convict, charms a gang of snarling bikers by dancing on the bar and platform heels, rescues the occupants of a burning pet shop, saving the snakes for last because he's scared of them, and ends up at the premiere of a Hollywood movie about himself. Pee Wee's nasal voice and honking laugh seemed cultivated to irritate every bit as much as his playground rejoinders, such as, I know you are, but what am I? repeated ad infinitum. But Rubin's single-minded focus on playing him utterly straight, if that's not the wrong word for a character steeped in camp, was vital to his success, which ballooned with the children's TV show Pee Wee's Playhouse, which ran between 1986 and 1990. We never tried to do a kid's show, but weird, he said in 2014. I feel like my commitment to Pee Wee, the concentration required to stay in that character, makes it real to me. It's a throwback and has lots of homage elements to it, but I always considered it a full-on real kid's show, even though it had all the adult humor in it. I took a lot of pride in being able to figure out ways to do stuff that could be seen by kids and grown-ups. Pee Wee's Playhouse pushed the surrealism of the film even further. In one episode, Pee Wee marries a bowl of fruit salad, which is wearing a wedding veil. Years later, the scene was held up as an example of the character's progressiveness, though in truth, it would be a challenge to find a moment from Pee Wee that did not serve that function. Hey, if you're enjoying this video, make sure you give it a like and subscribe to remember this if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all of our latest content. Whether filling his 1988 Christmas special with LGBT plus performers and allies such as Grace Jones, KD Lang, Cher and Little Richard or hiring strapping shirtless construction workers to build an extension made of fruitcake on the side of his playhouse, Pee Wee personified queerness without frightening the horses. One of the show's messages, said Rubens, was that non-conformity isn't bad. Bumps in the Road arrived in the form of a lackluster film sequel, Big Top Pee Wee, in 1988, and two scandals. The first in 1991, when Rubens was arrested and fined for masturbating in an adult cinema and then in 2002, when a police search of his collection of vintage erotica resulted in a misdemeanor charge for possession of child pornography, later reduced to probation for possession of obscene material. The image of Pee Wee was broken on July 26th, 1991. On his summer vacation, Rubens was visiting his parents in Sarasota and sought escape from boredom by catching a show of the X-rated film Nurse Nancy. He fell victim to a police sting operation and was arrested for sex charges when detectives allegedly saw him playing with his private parts. He was released on $219 bail 
and nobody realized what had happened until somebody recognized him beneath his long hair and goatee. The media went berserk. Kid's show star arrested for indecent exposure. Because of his behavior, CBS dropped the playhouse and related merchandise was released from its shelves. He agreed to pay a $50 fine plus $85 in court costs to Sarasota County and he produced a 30 second public service message for the Partnership for Drug Free America commercial. As part of the deal, the county sealed all legal papers relating to the actor's arrest and didn't leave Rubens with a criminal record. The scandal marked the virtual death of Pee Wee Herman. Rubens appeared as his favorite character for the last time at that autumn's MTV Music Video Awards. The enthusiastic reception was not surprising as he had received 15,000 supportive letters during his arrest. Regardless, he had recently made a promise not to play Pee Wee anymore and used his arrest as a chance to portray other roles. He was born in Peekskill, New York to Judy a teacher and Milton Rubenfeld, a former founding pilot of the Israeli Air Force who went on to sell cars and to own a lamp store. When Rubens was nine, the family moved to Sarasota, Florida. He was educated at Sarasota High School and Boston University and studied acting at the California Institute of the Arts, where his classmates included David Hasselhoff. He became a regular fixture on the comedy club circuit and appeared 14 times on The Gong Show, the competitive TV variety series. You could go on more than once if you were in disguise, Rubens explained. He acquired membership of the Screen Actors Guild after winning the contest. It was as part of the Los Angeles improvisational comedy group The Groundlings that he first developed Pee Wee Herman. He also went on The Dating Game, known to UK audiences as Blind Date, as Pee Wee, having filled out the application form and auditioned entirely in character. After failing an audition for the 1980-81 season of Saturday Night Live, Rubens borrowed $5,000 from his parents to produce the Pee Wee Herman show. It ran for five months in Los Angeles, later touring the US, and led to a one-off HBO special as well as absurdist turns on Late Night with David Letterman, during which Rubens never broke character. I always felt it was conceptual art, but no one knew that except me, he said. I went out of my way to make people feel Pee Wee was a real person. It worked way better if people were going, who the hell is that? His non-Pee Wee appearances were largely restricted to the years after Pee Wee's Playhouse ended in 1990. Burton gave him a cameo as the Penguin's father in Batman Returns, and he played a vampire in the original film version of Buffy the Vampire Slayer, both in 1992. He starred in the family comedies Dunstan Checks In and Matilda, both in 1996, and played a flatulent superhero in the comedy Mystery Men in 1999, as well as a pot-dealing hairdresser in the crime drama Blow in 2001. Most of his subsequent roles took the form of animation voice work or eccentric guest spots on sitcoms such as 30 Rock in 2007 and What We Do in the Shadows in 2019. Pee Wee's periodic returns were always greeted with affection. A new version of the Pee Wee Herman show which reached the stage in 2010 and the delightful Judd Apatow produced Netflix Pee Wee's Big Holiday in 2016 gave Rubens a chance to repair definitively any lingering damage done by his arrests. I wrecked it to some degree, you know, he told the New York Times. It got made into something different. The shine got taken off it. At a certain point, I just wanted to have a better end to my career. He bravely and privately battled acute myelogenous leukemia, which is cancer of the blood and bone marrow, for about six years. Just months before his death, it was discovered that the cancer had spread to his lungs. Paul Rubens, actor and writer, was born on the 27th of August 1952 and died on the 30th of July 2023. Now it's time to hear from you. 
Do you have a favorite Paul Rubens movie that you like the most or perhaps a moment in his career that you remember the most? Let us know in the comments below and if you haven't already done so, click the bell icon to stay updated on all of our latest content.